All right, let's go live now to Daniel, Daniel Schweimler. Daniel, let's take us through, first of all, the statements by Brazil's president. It doesn't sound like he's been much swayed by the international reaction to this. No, I think part of his uh, politics, Sammy, is that uh, he likes to defy the opinion, the uh, international opinion. He's also a man who came to power uh, during his electoral campaign last year, saying that this region was ripe for development. Uh, he saw the indigenous communities and the environmental lobby uh, as an impediment to development. And he's been, uh, now been in a meeting uh, with his governor, with governors of the Amazon region, with some of his cabinet ministers, and very much that same message has come out of that meeting with some governors saying they simply don't have the resources uh, to spend on the government agencies which are meant to protect this region and others, for, uh, Jair Bolsonaro himself, saying he's frustrated, Brazil is frustrated, that there, so much of this land in this region is protected, either as nature reserves or as a demarcated indigenous land. Uh, that they, 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 you know, they want to see Brazil develop, they want to see Brazil richer um, and so it's a very uh, different message to that coming out of the international community, which says it feels it has a right uh, to, uh, to protect the Amazon rainforest, which is in Brazil. So it sounds like they're walking a fine line then between uh, saying they're on top of these fires and whether they think these fires are really an environmental disaster or uh, perhaps a, an, a, an economic gain for the country. Well, I, th I think it's very much that. I mean, they don't see it as an environmental disaster. You can see I'm standing in a burnt field now, uh, just outside Porto Velho. Uh, they, it's something they do every year. That environment, local environment secretary uh, you saw in the package, he says it's a problem that they can contain. It's a natural phenomenon here. Uh, there's a culture here of burning. Uh, as we mentioned, the rainy season is just coming. We're not going to see much in the way of fires to the next few months. But almost certainly, uh, we will see massive fires next year. I mean, they broke all records this year. There were twice as many as there were in 2018. Next year, it's quite likely, given the economic, uh, given the uh, environmental conditions, uh, that we will see even more fires uh, because of the conditions being created by this government. More people are likely to come to this region and start more fires. So uh, that seems almost certain. Uh, what the international community can do about that, other than criticise, if the money they're offering is being, is being spurned, what they can do about that is un clear. The pressure is mounting, but Jair Bolsonaro and his government seem intent on, on defying that criticism. All right. Thanks so much. Daniel Schweimler there. And fires have been burning throughout the Amazon rainforest at record levels this year. 77,000 flames have been recorded across Brazil over the last 12 months. This map from NASA shows those burning across South America right now. Satellite imaging also shows the amount of carbon monoxide these fires have produced this month alone. In less than two weeks, they've pushed the levels by nearly two-thirds. Carbon monoxide plays a huge role in air pollution and climate change. The Amazon is often referred to as the lungs of the Earth because of the amount of carbon dioxide it absorbs and oxygen it produces, basically supplying more than 20% of the world's oxygen. Erica Beringer is Senior Biodiversity Research Associate at the University of Oxford. She joins us by Skype from Oxford in the United Kingdom. Good to have you with us. So let me get you, if I may, to respond to the sort of message that's coming out of uh, officials in Brazil that, hey, this is kind of like a seasonal, cyclical event, the fires burning. But to be clear, the scale of the burning this year is much bigger than usual, right? Yes, correct. And one thing that I think it's really important to get clear is that these fires are not natural. They don't start because of climatic conditions. Fires in the Amazon need a human ignition source. So someone needs to put fire somewhere for the fire to spread. And what you're seeing are fires that are related to deforestation. So first the forest is chopped down, then it's satellite after a few months drying during the dry season, it's satellite for it to become ashes, and then it's possible to put pressure on. So what we are seeing this year, the, the scale of the fires this year is related to deforestation. The deforestation numbers have increased severely, according to the numbers from the Brazilian Space and Agency, and that is bound to um, be accompanied by a high number of fires. 
All right, so we've got a lot of carbon monoxide being released into the atmosphere. What will that mean for climate change in the environment? This is a huge problem because the Amazon alone stores the equivalent of 100 years of CO2 emissions um, from the U.S. That's how much carbon it's locked into the Amazon. And the moment that you cut it down and you put it on fire, all that carbon goes to the atmosphere, either as CO2 or carbon monoxide, as you mentioned. So, of course, it's going to have a huge impact into accelerating climate change. Mm. And what about all that smoke and rainfall? What will it do to rainfall? So we have seen the rainfall patterns change in regions with high levels of deforestation in the Amazon. And then the dry season becomes longer because less rain is being generated by the forest. But one aspect here about the smoke is about people's health. So we see that in years of extremely high fire occurrence, like 2019, there is in average an increase of 200 percent of hospital admissions of children with respiratory diseases. So this is not only an environmental, environmental issue, but also a social one. And I wonder if you could just clear one thing up. You know, we often refer to the Amazon as the lungs of Earth. There are those who say, no, the oxygen comes, that's, it's kind of being misrepresented. The oxygen comes from the seas and so on. Could you clarify from a scientific perspective what exactly the role that the Amazon forest plays for the availability of oxygen? And the Amazon definitely is a larger producer of oxygen, but it consumes a lot of part of the oxygen it produces. Because, of course, large organisms, large trees need to absorb a lot of carbon, uh, sorry, a lot of oxygen to stay alive. And, but algae in the oceans are the larger source of of oxygen. So they are the true lungs of the world. So the Amazon would be more like the air con of the world, something that keeps the climate and it helps to fight the climate change, keep the carbon locked down. But one mm -hmm. aspect here is that it's not because the Amazon is not the lungs of the world that we shouldn't protect it because right. it's really important for climate just for different reasons. Right, right. That it's more about uh, preserving the carbon monoxide and not releasing it into the world rather than producing. Right. Got it. Thank you so much. It's been a really interesting conversation. Thank you.